Hello, welcome to Westover's online church service. We are so glad you are joining us this morning. If you are new or would like information about our church, or would you like to hear about ways to connect, request prayer, or speak to a pastor, please fill out our quick connect card located on our website, westoverchurch.com, and we will follow up with you. Now at Westover, our purpose is to develop mature followers of Christ through growing in the gospel, connecting in community, and serving and living on mission. If you would like to know more about that, be on the lookout for details on our next Discover Westover class. That is a great way to get an introduction into our church. You'll hear from one of our pastors and I'll be there too. So we hope that you will join us. Can you all believe that it is July? The good news is we are back meeting at Westover. So every Sunday this month at 10 a.m., we will meet in the back parking lot for our outdoor service. But we know some of you may not quite be ready to join us in person, so we will be live streaming that service on our YouTube and Facebook channels. That way we can all still worship together. Now speaking of our outdoor service, it's getting ready to start. So grab your Bibles, refill your coffee cups, Settle in as we head outside and begin our service together. Online and you tuned in a little bit early. You may have saw something else going on here. That was our kindergarten Bible presentation. I just want to take a minute to recognize that. Um, that was just something we do every year to recognize the kindergartners and everything they've learned. We present them with their own Bible. Um, and if you saw that, that's just a special time for them. So I just wanted to let you know what that was in case you were wondering. All right, so I have a couple announcements while I'm up here. First, I want to introduce myself because I'm not familiar to this stage. My name is Ben Evans. I'm the elementary director here at Westover, so that's why I was uh, part of that kindergarten Bible presentation. Uh, but I want to let you know about a few other things going on in the church, all right? First piece of communication is VBS this year. If you have not signed up for VBS... We are having a VBS, and the deadline to register is this Friday. It's July 17th, okay? That is happening August 4th through the 7th. It's going to happen from 6.30 to 8 p.m. every night, but it looks a little bit different. We're doing a virtual VBS, and so what's going to happen, instead of meeting here at the church, we are going to get together with families who live close by in our areas, and we're going to group you guys up in small group settings where the children can hear from different speakers, and they're going to learn how they can focus on God this year. Again, the deadline to register is this Friday, so please register by then. The second piece of communication is offering boxes. We have offering boxes. Instead of getting passed around, they are back there toward the exit when you leave the parking lot. So if you want to tithe and offer, please make sure you see that on your way out. And the third piece of communication is a global prayer event. This is going to be happening on Monday, July 13th at 7 p.m. And this is going to be streamed live on our Westover Facebook channel. So uh, please tune into that. It's an opportunity for us to join together and just come together as a body of believers and pray for what God is doing in and through global missions at Westover. All right, so with that said, I'm going to pray and then we are going to break into a time of worship. All right, let's bow our heads together. Lord, I thank you so much uh, just for the opportunity to be here together. We thank you that we are able to meet together as a church. Um, I just thank you um, for the sunshine. I, I know it's a little bit warm, but Lord, we praise you for that. And uh, I just thank you for all your goodness to us. Pray that you would open our hearts to the message that you have for us to hear today. And I pray that it would take root in our lives and that we would use it to continue to grow closer to you, and that everything we do here would just be glorifying to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Let's worship together. Amen. Well, again, thank you guys for joining us this morning. We welcome you to Westover, the parking lot. We've got a brilliant display of tents and umbrellas and people hanging out in the trees, so it's, it's awesome to have you guys here. We really appreciate you joining. We invite you to stand, sit, dance, whatever you want to do out there uh, to be comfortable. We hear that in God's word, it says his grace is sufficient for us. We believe that this morning. Let's sing together. Oceans of kindness, we've 
after wave mercy arriving again and again your love will find us you're never far away come on battles behind us battles ahead god you are for us what stands against we have this promise you're never our time of worship as we sing about the God who makes the way for us. He makes the way in the darkness. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. Let's sing that again. You're here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this. Waymaker. Waymaker. 
Good morning, Westover family. 
Can you hear me way back there? Yes. Special welcome to everybody on this uh, July brisk. Ooh, it's cold out here, isn't it? <laughs> and especially to our kindergartens, kindergartners, uh, congratulations to you. And uh, to everyone watching at home, even to those who uh, have a blanket wrapped around you because you set the air conditioner too low, we even welcome you. Um, just a quick word. As the results of the virus continue, and as difficult, I know, as the physical aspects can be, and there are some family members here who have COVID. You have family members with it. But along with the physical, I know the longer this goes, the more the emotional challenge are, just the ongoingness of it. I think I felt some of that this week. I don't know who, who hasn't. And you know, God's word has a great deal to say about perseverance. Perseverance, just the word means that we are facing stress or duress or some kind of challenges. And to persevere doesn't mean to pretend it doesn't exist. But when God's word talks about persevering, it's always a matter of where our focus is. Is our focus under the sun living where we just constantly focus on the negatives, the problem, the challenges? Or do we focus on above the sun living in the terms of Ecclesiastes? And I just want to encourage you in these days of the, you know, the old King James used the word long suffering. Anybody remember that word? Long suffering. It is what it says. It means we go through periods of times where the suffering, there's nothing we can really do to abbreviate it. And so I just want to encourage you to look above the sun so that you can gain your strength for him. Let's pray. Lord, I found it very interesting this week that just the wearing down of how long this is going on um, with looking to the fall and no answers for sure of what's going to open and what's not, and, and, and on and on it goes. And, and Lord, I just know how much I need you to help me gain my strength from you rather than letting everything around me take away my courage, my strength, my purpose. And what I pray for myself, I pray for my people. Help us, Lord, to persevere. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, for some, this would be pure fantasy. And that's the word I, you wanted to hear. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the second chapter of Ecclesiastes, where our text this morning our key verse is verse 10, okay? And the teacher tells us, I denied myself nothing, nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. And I imagine some read those words and think, wow, that's just too good to be true. Well, believe it or not, those are the words of our master teacher who, remember, went on a massive search desperately attempting to make sense out of this world. Remember this world, the world that we see, the here and the now, or in his words, life under the sun, under heaven. And in chapter 2, he reported on all the various destinations to which he traveled. So what you're looking at in chapter 2 is really his travel itinerary. And remember our teacher, he spared no expense, and he took all the time he needed on his sabbatical research. Now, one has suggested the teacher was actually island hopping, like being on a ship, being on a cruise. Um, by the way, I want you to know that walking around are going to be people with water, maybe cool pops, um, and they're free. So if they try to charge you two bucks, 
you know, let me know. But we're doing that so you can help stay cool. Little islands of relief, island hopping. That reminded me of a comment made by a comedian. And he wasn't trying to be funny. Instead, he was reflecting. And I want you to listen to his words. He said, everyone is looking for good sex, good food, and a good laugh. These are little islands of relief in what is often a painful existence. Church, those words could have come out of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, where our professor, traveling from one island of relief to the next, was trying to make sense of what is a painful and meaningless existence. So let's get started with the big picture by highlighting his various destinations. He's invited us to join his cruise. Now, I'm not a big alliteration guy, but I'm about to drop five W's on you, okay? Five W's. Number one, wisdom. Wisdom. The teacher set out to become the wisest, the most intelligent person who ever lived. And I'm not just talking knowledge, but understanding. Chapter 1, verse 13, I devoted myself to search for understanding, to explore by wisdom everything being done in the world. So obviously the teacher sought out the greatest minds of his day. I imagine he brought in world scholars on a host of subjects to discuss and to debate with him. He read the greatest books. I assumed he had a massive library. And this was his premise. Wisdom and understanding would open the doors to true meaning. And wise he became. Our teacher wrote 3,000 proverbs, not to mention, not to mention over a 1,000 songs. And by his own omission, chapter 1, verse 16, I have greater wisdom and knowledge than any of the kings who ruled before me. And then here in chapter 2, verse 12, I turn my thoughts to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. So our first island is called wisdom. Our second W, our second island is wine. Wine. Now, not just wine, but wine representing pleasure, the good life. Notice how chapter 2 begins. I said to myself, come, let's give pleasure a try. I thought in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. And so in the verses that follow, we find words like laughter, pleasure, Embracing folly, and of course, in verse 3, wine, I tried cheering myself with wine. And just what was the teacher's goal? Verse 3 goes on. I wanted to see what was worthwhile for men to do under heaven during the, <laughs> during the few days of their lives. So anything went. A life of luxury, a life of leisure, as we said, what many would call the good life. Hang out, sip wine, party. If it feels good, do it. You know what? If our teacher lived in our day, he would have been a reality star. It's exactly what we're talking about. Okay? Our third destination goes in a completely different direction. It's not wisdom. It's not wine. It's work. Work. As in accomplishment as in success. And this was a big deal to our teacher. Just listen, starting at verse 4. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself, which included a massive palace, planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees, Oh my, it goes on an all-out experiment to see if it was humanly possible to find meaning, not only to find meaning, but to find genuine happiness 
in this life through work, through projects. And you know, several of us are no different. We make life all out to be work. We make life out to be the next project, the next career move, the next promotion, the next move upward, thinking somehow that is what will bring satisfaction. That will bring happiness and contentment. Projects, accomplishments, letters after our name, success, building a reputation, a name, a brand, things that will outlast us. Our fourth W, and you knew this one would show up, you knew we were headed to this island. Wealth, wealth. Do you see the beginning of verse 8? I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. And with it, everything wealth could bring. You name it, you think it, the teacher possessed it. From servants who waited on him day and night to land acquisitions, real estate, flocks and herds, to entertainers, to celebrities, to the finest of, well, you just name it, he denied himself nothing he desired. Actually, church, that's putting it mildly. Many scholars are convinced that our teacher, right here in Ecclesiastes, just may have been the richest person ever to live. I saw one estimate of his net worth in today's money. 2.2, no, not billion, 2.2 trillion dollars. It's estimated that the richest person on planet Earth right now has a net worth of over 100 million, 100 billion dollars that he's still $2 trillion short of our teacher, which would mean on his journey, he not only owned the fleet of ships, but he owned all these islands of, of relief. Wealth. Verse 10 from the Living New Translation, anything I wanted, I took. I did not restrain myself from any joy, any possession. And then, of course, that leads to number five, the fifth W is women. And by women, we're talking about sexuality and sensuality. Verse 8 continues. Now, in verse 8, there's a word in Hebrew of which scholars are not absolutely certain. It's the only time it's used. But their best guess is harem. Harem. And that seems to make sense since our teacher had three hundred concubines. Sorry, parents, you're going to have to explain that one to your kindergartners. 300 concubines besides his 700 wives. Now, I understand any comment I make at this point will only, only get me in trouble, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But look at the rest of verse 8. And a harem as well, the delights of the heart of man. I don't need to go there. We all know what he was talking about. Now, I've researched and I've read what others, I don't get the 700 wives. I really don't. But here's our theme verse. Whether it was regarding wisdom, wine, work, wealth, women, verse 10 applied. Our teacher said, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. And no one did it better than our teacher. Verse 9, I became greater by far. So this was our teacher's itinerary. These were the islands he researched. Wisdom, wine, work, wealth, and women. Now, if you're any kind of student... You have to be thinking, come on, Don, don't keep us waiting any longer. What did the teacher conclude? Well, we certainly can't get to everything today, but here in chapter 2, he spoke from two realities. Two realities. The first we'll call the short-term reality. 
And the short-term reality was delight and reward. It's coming up there, I promise you. Delight and reward. Check out verse 10 in its entirety. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. Now watch this. My heart took delight in all my work, in all my research. And this was the reward for all my labor. Now please don't miss this. Because sometimes we Christians are so dishonest. We're such awful liars. What our teacher said was, in the short run, every one of these things brings its own reward. Delight and pleasure, fun and foolishness, satisfaction and accomplishment. So please, let's not lie. Parents, don't lie to your kids. Every one of these is attractive. Even those things that are sinful. Thankfully, God's word is so truthful. It tells us there is pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in sin. That's right. Pleasure in living for self. Pleasure in living the good life. Pleasure in living for wealth and luxury. Pleasure in living for power and influence. Pleasure in living for sexuality and sensuality. And you know what? We better have better answers than, well, there's no fun or pleasure in those things. Really? Try that line with your children, and then they go out and experience some of these things, and they seem like an awful lot of fun, parents. And you told them there was no pleasure. Or, God will get you. Or, those are the rules. We need to have better answers than that. See, the teacher said, speaking from wisdom, in the short run, my heart took delight. And this was my reward. And by the way, there is a corollary reality. Without God, this is as good as it gets. This is all life under the sun can deliver if things go well. Short-term delight and short-term reward. That's it. So see, that explains why the world lives the way it does. God's not a part of their worldview. These things bring some pleasure. So go for it. What else is there? So grab all the gusto while you can, because in the words of our teacher, tomorrow you may die. But then our teacher stepped back. And instead of living in the moment, in the pleasure of the moment, he hit the fast forward button a few years. And what he saw, he didn't like. So what are we going to call this? This isn't short term reality. So I guess we'll call it long term. But please don't let that fool you because long term is not as far out there as you think. Remember in verse 10, the teacher told us in the short term, my heart took delight. Well, now come to verse 11. Notice the huge difference. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done, when I, back, when I went back and reviewed these five islands, all my research, survey meaning I stepped back, I thought through those islands of wisdom and wine and work and wealth and women. Yes, in the short term, there was a lot of delight. But in the long term, everything, meaning all of it, was meaningless a chasing after the, the wind. So long term, meaningless. Pleasure in the short run, meaningless in the long run. Now, the obvious question is to which are you going to live your life? For the short term or the long term? Bottom line, spoil alert, newsflash, neither, neither yields lasting satisfaction. You see, the teacher went on to show us that the so-called good life, be it wine, be it women, be it pleasure, be it luxury, it's attractive, all right. But with the attraction... 
often comes addiction. And addiction means I'm no longer in control. I need more just to receive the same level of pleasure. So it's not near as much fun. It's not near as pleasurable as it once was. Why? Because now it controls me. And it's all temporary, not to mention destructive. This is why sin often takes us further than we ever intended to go. This is why the Bible says, oh, there is pleasure in sin, but only for a season. Because sin messes things up. Sin complicates life big time. What looks so appealing becomes so entangling. It's a vicious cycle. It's that circular living we talked about last week. And in the long run, it takes you nowhere. And it all adds up to a great big zero. Meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Well, what about those other islands? Wisdom, work, wealth. I mean, we would call most of those virtues. And all that they can bring, projects and accomplishments, success, and even legacy. Oh, legacy. That's what people say life is all about. It's what I, it's what I legacy. Well, I want to read to you just a few verses out of this chapter. You listen. Wisdom is of more value than foolishness. Just as light is better than darkness. The wise man has eyes in his head while the fool walks in darkness. But, but I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. For the wise man, like the fool, will not be long remembered in the days to come. Both will be forgotten. Like the fool, the wise man too must die. So I hated life. I hated all the things that I had toiled for under the sun because I must lead them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool. Yet he has control over all the work into which I poured all my effort. This too is meaningless. What does a man get for all the toil and anxious striving with which he labors under the sun? All his days, his work is pain and grief. Even at night, his mind does not rest. This, too, is meaningless. <laughs> so much for work and wealth and legacy. Our teacher went after everything, experiencing it all, accomplishing it all. But when he looked back, the only words he had were words like, fatalistic, unfair, unjust, temporary, empty, senseless, vanity, meaningless. And what he says to you and me is found in verse 12. Then I turned my thoughts to consider wisdom and also to madness and folly. What more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? In other words, students, been there, done that. He says to you and me, you name it, I've been there. You think it, I've experienced it. Let me save you time and money and most importantly, frustration and heartache. It's all a chasing after the wind. Now we're almost finished, but you're going to learn one of the things I love about this book is its subtle teachings the gems and nuggets the teacher drops along the way. And I absolutely love the last paragraph of, cha of chapter 2. Up until now, we've joined the teacher on his cruise to his various islands. We've heard his short-term and his long-term realities, which, to be honest, are pretty depressing. But before he closes out this chapter in his personal journey, he makes two headings. One heading says, without God, and the other heading says, with God. And in verse 24, he tells us the best 
the best we can expect from life without God. And here's what he says. A man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. And then I love this, whether we acknowledge it or not, our teacher says this too is from the hand of God. In other words, God is there whether you acknowledge him or not. God rules the world even if he's not part of your worldview. Even your ability to eat and drink, and if you happen to be fortunate enough to find some satisfaction in your work, even that is a gift from God whether you acknowledge him or not. But that's as good as it will get. And remember, that's the short term. It goes down from there. But then our teacher drops in verse 25, speaking of the one who is not just living for life under the sun. But verse 25 finally speaks of the one who seeks God. He says, for without God... Who can, who can really eat or find enjoyment? To the man who pleases him, to the person who pleases God, God gives wisdom and knowledge and happiness. Wow! For the first time, the teacher mentioned happiness. He points us to something that is beyond, above life under the sun to something that is greater than short-term delight or even long-term realities. He points us to that which is eternal, meaning timeless, something that's lasting, not temporary, stuff that isn't here today, gone tomorrow, things we don't have to leave. And he points us to the reality that it is possible for you and I to live our lives to please God. And I want you to notice for the first time in this journal, he says something that man can please God and the next thing out of his mouth is not meaningless. The next thing out of his mouth is not like a chasing after the wind. It's doable more than that. It's what we've been created to do, to please God. So how about you? Do you choose to live your life without God? I'm not asking, do you believe in God? Do you choose to live your life without God? Jesus came to show us we don't have to live without God. I'm amazed at how many choose to live without God. At best, at best, wisdom or wine or work or wealth or, or women at best, you'll have temporary delight. At best. Oh, today, I joined the teacher. Stop living your life without God. Stop living your life only under the sun. And today, choose to live your life to please God. For it not only yields short-term results and long-term results, but eternal results. It's not only external stuff, but it is internal stuff. And the way to begin pleasing God is by believing in the one who he sent just for you. And I can't think of a better way to end Ecclesiastes chapter 2 than the word Jesus. You can please God. And Ecclesiastes chapter 2, after taking on us on this long journey with all these experiences, some which would say, wow, that would be fantasy to be able to do all of that. After doing all of that and declaring it empty, he ultimately says, what can bring you meaning and satisfaction and lasting joy and peace is the knowledge that you can please God. And that's what I want to encourage you this week to be aware. All these other things are temporary. Please God is what you and I were created to do. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for such wisdom. 
I thank you for the report of so many things that mankind seeks to find fulfillment. And today I want to thank you that your word proclaims them empty and you give us the alternative, which is forever to please you. And I pray that that would be our heart's desire this week, that we would be men and women. We don't always do it well. We don't always do it right. Sometimes we, we we're prone to wander. But Lord, I pray that we would leave here deep within us that our greatest desire is to please you, O oh God. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing this last song with us. Let's sing this together. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late working all things out, working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. his name high. As we leave this morning, 
We're reminded of the verse. To him. <laughs> Are we reminded? That's a good question. That's all we know, right? I mean, for crying out loud, that's all we need to know. In the middle of all this mess, in the middle of our craziness, all we need to know is God is great. That's it. We wish you a wonderful week. Have a wonderful time this week. Lift his name high. You're dismissed. Thank you so much for joining us today. As a reminder, you can fill out our Quick Connect card at any time and we will follow up with you. And you can get all the latest information on our website, westoverchurch.com, and by following our Facebook and Instagram accounts and checking out our YouTube channel. And if you would like to give to Westover, you can do so by mailing a check, going through our website, or texting the number you see on your screen. We hope you will join us next week as Pastor Don continues our sermon series on Ecclesiastes. Until then, my friends, take care, be well, and we hope you have a great week.